Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm trying to be nice. Amen. I, I made it a point this morning to pray. Lord, let me be nice today. Amen. All right. Well, let's get started. Turn in your Bible to John chapter five, if you would. John 539 is where we'll start today. And uh, sometimes, you know, when we're getting these sermons prepared, sometimes it's something the Lord gives us this week as we're reading the Bible. Uh, sometimes it's something that God just puts in your head, pops in your head. Hey, what about this? And you go do a Bible study about it. Sometimes it's something from your heart that, you know, I, the Lord's placed this on my heart. I want to talk about. And then there's other times when it's like two or three years you've had something you want to talk about, but you just couldn't get it together. And that's kind of what this sermon is. For like two, three, four years, I've been wanting to, to mention these things. But how's the best way to mention that? Because I just couldn't get it together. Well, the last couple of weeks, God let me get it together. While we were on vacation, I was thinking about this. And... I want to do this in the spirit of meekness and in love, amen, but I also want to do it right. So how do you do that and talk about people? <laughs> I don't want to talk about people. I made it a, a point in my ministry not to mention names because all that does is make those guys riled up and then they want to attack you. So in my ministry, I've decided rather than talking about the man, I'm going to talk about the issue or the doctrine that the man brings up. So we're not going to mention names today, but there were some things that were brought up and uh, they're confusing. You know, the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. And I've recently had some people contact me and say, Brother Breaker, I heard this guy say that, and that confused me. And I said, well, that confused me too, because <laughs> I don't know what he means and what he's trying, what is he trying to say? And one of the things, somebody sent me a video of somebody, and like I said, I won't mention the fella, but uh, this fella said something to the effect of, it's not the Bible that saves you, it's Jesus that saves you. And when I heard that, I was like, what? I mean, that's kind of right. Yes, Jesus saves you, but how do we get saved? Through the Bible. We can't get saved without the Bible. What a weird statement to make. It's not the Bible that saves you. It's, it's Jesus that saves you. I'm going to show you today. No, you've got to have the Bible. And yes, Jesus saves you, but how does he save you? Well, we're going to look at that. What are we saved by? What we are saved by. I've got four things today, and this is what saves us. And what's amazing to me is they all intertwine. It's really the same thing <laughs> in a way, but it all intertwines. Hey, brother, how you doing? It's good to see you back there. So we're going to look at that today. Now, there was another thing that I heard years ago that someone said that always bothered me, too. And sometimes people will follow a man so much that they'll follow whatever that man says rather than what the Bible says. Now, the Bible says, be you followers of me as I am of Christ. That's what Paul said. It's not wrong to follow a man who's teaching you the Bible, but make sure that man is following Christ. Right. Amen? Otherwise, we're in trouble. What's up? I was itching. Oh, I thought you were pointing at me. I got stain here or something. So, uh, there's, there was a man that said this one time, and the reason I'm talking about this is because people are bringing these two things up and trying to throw them back at me to tell me that I'm preaching false doctrine because these men said this. But there's a man one time that said this. He said, you're not saved by a thing, you're saved by a person. Yeah. And when he said that, I thought, huh? And that, that kind of bothered me a little bit because what are we saved by? The blood of Jesus. That's a thing, right? It's that thing that Jesus did to save us. Yes, the person Jesus saves us, but how? By something he did. So that always kind of bothered me. You're not saved by a thing, you're saved by a person. And I always thought to myself, well, there's something more to that. How do I, how do I get this thing together? Because I want to get this together. I've had people lately throw that up at me and say, Breaker, you're a heretic because you preach faith in the blood. It's not the thing that saves us. It's the man. It's the person that saves us. And I'm like, so you're a blood denier. That, that's what you are. Okay. All right. Now I've got your number, right? <laughs> um, be careful what you say. Because a lot of times we say things without thinking and people will grab hold of what you said and like parrots will run out there and parrot that. And now it doesn't matter what the Bible says. They've already made up their mind. That's their little saying that they say. So I want to deal with this today. Like I said, spirit of meekness, not bringing up names. Let's deal with the issue. It is Jesus that saves us. But there's something that he had to do. And that thing is what saves us. And that thing is really him and who he is and what he is. So you'll understand it better when we get to the end. Let's start in John chapter 5 and verse 39. John chapter 5 and verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. This is Jesus Christ speaking, and he says, search the scriptures. What are the scriptures? Genesis to Revelation. And he says that the scriptures testify of Jesus. 
This whole book is about Jesus Christ. One old preacher said, you go to the Bible and you'll find Jesus just about on every page. Because it's all either in type or literally him speaking. It's all about Jesus Christ. So this fellow stands up and says, it's not the Bible that saves us, it's Jesus that saves us. Well, I'm going to show you that it's both. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. But yes, I 100% agree that we are saved by Jesus. Amen? So who saves us? The person Jesus saves us. Now, he saves us by something that he did. But we're saved by what? Jesus Christ. Let's look at some verses on that. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. And I've just got a whole bunch of verses today, so we're going to be running verses. So I hope your fingers are ample. You know, this finger hurts a little bit. I don't know why. Um, but Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 I think it was from fishing. I think I pulled at something on the line or something. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So you must be saved by Jesus. You know what that means? That means Muhammad doesn't save you. Buddha doesn't save you. You can't get saved by some other religious leader. You know, uh, Joseph Smith doesn't save you. Jesus saves. Allah doesn't save us. All right. Did Allah die on the cross for our sins? No. Oh, not that I know of. That's not what my Bible says. So it is Jesus. So it's all about Jesus. Yes, Jesus saves. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. Okay, we've got lots of verses to get to today, so I'll need you to be turning. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. So that is a true statement, Jesus saves. But notice how he put a false statement with it. And I'm going to explain that to you today, that there are four things, at the least, that save us. And I want to show you how they all, oh man, I can't wait to get this out there, how they all intertwine. I was just so excited how the Lord put this together. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. Hebrews 7, 25. Wherefore he, that's Jesus, is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So from the guttermost to the uttermost, one preacher said, God is able to save anybody. I'm not a Calvinist. Some Calvinists go, well, there's some people that God can't save. <laughs> no, Jesus saves. Amen. We, we have Bible um, tracts. Jesus saves, uh, you know, little signs and everything. Jesus saves. There's a song, Jesus saves. I mean, do you know that Jesus they saves? They're so wrong. And, and the world died says, on the cross for everyone. exactly. Not. Matthew 121. The world says we're so wrong, you know, Jesus doesn't save. Well, they've never tasted him. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And what we want is we want people to have the same joy and peace and happiness we have because we know this. We know Jesus saves. Amen. If you're not saved here today, please get saved. In uh, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, look what it says. And he shall bring forth a son. Excuse me. <laughs> There's your men being pregnant nowadays. Boy, what a faux pas that was. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. What does Jesus do? He saves from sin. That's what is the blessing. Is Jesus saves from sin. Um, are you saved from your sins? You know, if you're not saved, the Bible says you're still in your sin. And you'll have to pay for it someday. I don't want to see that. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, and verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of whom I am chief, Paul says. And then uh, 1 Timothy 2 4, anti Calvinist verse here. <laughs> uh, 1 Timothy 2 4, speaking of Jesus Christ, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Jesus Christ wants to save. So, yes, Jesus saves. No problem with that. You know, uh, John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So you're saved through him. Um, John chapter 10 and verse 9, these are Jesus' words. What did Jesus say in John chapter 10 and verse 9? Uh, these, these are all things that we already know. Amen? But you know, the world today doesn't know this. It's so sad that there's so many in the world today don't even know who Jesus is. John chapter 10 and verse 9. Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be what? Saved. saved. So how? Or what do we say? By. By me. By Jesus. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. So who saves? Jesus saves. Clearly that's a Bible doctrine. It is correct to say Jesus saves. But what about the Bible? The Word of God. How can anyone say that the Bible doesn't save us? It's just Jesus that saves us. 
Are there any verses in the Bible that say we're saved by the Word of God? Can anybody think of one off the top of your head? Well, okay, there's faith saves. You're getting ahead of me. Where in the Bible does it say we are saved by the Word of God? A verse that actually says saved by the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. Okay, that's John 1.1. 1, 1. That's Jesus. He is the Word. Man, you're getting ahead of me, man. <laughs> Cut it out. No, no. You're doing good. You're doing good. Let's go to James chapter 1, verse 21. Amen. James 1.21. Now, remember this statement. You're saved by Jesus. You're not saved by the Word. Not saved by the Bible. Oh, okay. James chapter 1, verse 21. James 1.21. Let's just read what the Bible says. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Right. Does the Bible say that the word of God can save you? That's what my Bible says. Right. So when I hear people make statements, I always try to go to the Bible and say, did what he say line up with the Bible? And if someone says something like that, I go, eh, doesn't line up with the Bible. My, my heretic alarm goes off. You know, it's, oh, heretic, heresy, heresy. Don't say things that are anti-biblical. Right. Because the Bible says that you can be saved through the Bible. Yep. Acts chapter 13 and verse 26. You see, the Bible teaches that you have to hear something to be saved. And now we can go off on another tangent. There's a lot of churches out there today say, you don't have to hear anything to get saved. You don't have to know anything to get saved. That's a ridiculous anti-biblical right. statement. You cannot get saved without the Bible. Amen? So why would somebody say something otherwise? Uh, Acts chapter 13 and verse 26. Acts 13, 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. Yep. The word of God tells us about how to be saved. You can't get saved without the word of God. You need this book to hear how God says, Jesus, to be saved. So the Bible is the word of who? Jesus. And so Jesus tells us in the Bible, uh, Romans 10, 17. You don't have to turn there. It says, uh, for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yep. You've got to hear the word of God. Acts chapter 28. Oh, that's Acts 26. Nope, okay. Acts chapter 28. I thought we, we got it up there, but no. Acts chapter 28. Acts 28, verse 26 through 28. In Acts 28, 26 through 28, this is actually a quote of Jesus. So Paul is quoting Jesus when he goes to this passage. Acts 28, 26. Saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes. You read the Bible, you're seeing it with your eyes, aren't you? See with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Can you be converted without hearing something? No. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Verse 28, Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and they will hear it. Right. You need to hear the word of God to be saved. What a ridiculous statement for someone to make and say, you're saved by Jesus. You're not saved by the Bible. The Bible is the words of Jesus. And Jesus tells us in the Bible, this is how you get saved. Without that, you can't get saved. What, is Jesus going to shout down from heaven and, and give you a special revelation? Uh, those days are gone. We see that in Peter. He says the Bible is the more sure word of prophecy. Right? The more sure word of prophecy. So that's what the Bible teaches. We're in Acts. Let's go to Acts 11:14. I just want to give you as much scripture as I can. Amen. Acts eleven fourteen, And be careful when you're listening to a, a man preach. Make sure everything he says lines up with the Bible. Right. Now, I, I don't want to nitpick, you know. And, uh, a lot of times people say good things, but every now and then we say something silly. Or something just off the cuff and it doesn't line up with the Bible. We need to get that right. We need to make sure that what we say lines up with the Bible. Acts chapter 11 and verse 14. Acts eleven fourteen. Who shall tell thee words, hear this, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. If they weren't hearing those words, they wouldn't have got saved. So would you agree that it was through those words that they got saved? So the Bible, what is the Bible? It's the word of God. 
Who is God? Jesus. So it's really Jesus' words. And you've got to have the Bible. So how do we get saved? We saved by Jesus and by the Word. For without the Word we can't be saved. Now who is Jesus? There we go. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. So Jesus is who? Well, I was about to put it in red. Let me put it in black. Jesus is the Word, capital W. Did you know that's a capital W? The Bible is lowercase w. You know there's people out there claiming to be pastors that don't even know the difference. In your Bible, when it's talking about Jesus Christ, it's a capital W, the Word of God. When it's talking about the Bible, it's a lowercase w, Word of God. But I've seen and I've read many books by many pastors, and they talk about the Bible, and they capitalize that, thinking they're respecting the Bible, but now you just cause confusion. Is he talking about Jesus, or is he talking about his Word? Well, it's the same word for both. <laughs> and guess what? Jesus is his Word. Amen. Right? I mean, a man is only as good as his Word. Can Jesus lie? So if Jesus says it, then it must be true and you believe it. To believe a man's word is to believe that man. If I told you I'm going to do this for you and you believe me, what are you believing in? Well, he said it, so it must be true. You're believing in my word, but you're trusting in me too, aren't you? Yes. Because it was my word that said it's going to take place. Do you see how it's the same thing? <laughs> you, it, you almost can't differentiate the two. So you've got to understand that. You've got to understand what the Word of God is. Uh, Jesus Christ is called the Word of God, Revelation 19, 13. That is a title. That's His name. The Word, capital W, of God. The Word of God and the Word of God are so much alike. How do you differentiate them? The Word, capital W, Jesus, is perfect, Hebrews 5, 9. The Word, the Bible, is perfect, Psalms 19.7. Isn't that amazing? The Word of God is eternal. Jesus is eternal, Hebrews 1.8. Well, the Bible is eternal, Psalms 119.89. Everlasting, Jesus Christ is everlasting, Revelation 1.18. The Bible is everlasting, 1 Peter 1.23. Let's look at that one. Let's look at 1 Peter 1.23. I suddenly realize I'm going to finish real short on this probably, so <laughs> then again I'll probably go long. I hope not. I want to finish early today if we can. But 1 Peter chapter 1, and uh, look at verse 23. 1 Peter 1, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. There you go. Again, we're saved by the word of God. Right? What a ridiculous statement. You're saved by Jesus, not by the Bible. That's someone that I think has not ever read the Bible. Right. Or if they had, their brain's not working. They're not giving what the Bible says. The Bible says it's through the Word. Holy. Jesus Christ is holy, Hebrews 7, 26. The Bible, the Holy Scriptures is what it's called, Romans 1, 2. Incorruptible. All right, we just read 1 Peter 1, 23. The Bible is incorruptible. Did you know Jesus Christ is called incorruptible? That's right. Truth. The Bible is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, the Bible says about the Bible. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. How could the Bible be truth and Jesus be truth? Because truth incarnate, Jesus spoke it. Yep. And what he speaks is truth. So man and his word, they're like that. <laughs> you can't separate them, right? It says here, sanctifies. Jesus sanctifies, Hebrews 10.10. 10. Well, the Word of God sanctifies them, John 17.17. 17. Judges, here we go. Who's going to judge all people someday? Jesus is the judge. But you know the Bible is His Word, and the Bible judges us because He said in that day He will judge you according to His Word. You need to get to that Word because you can't be saved without that Word. You need to know what that Word says. You need to read that Bible. How often are you reading your Bible? Have you memorized any scriptures yet? Do you know what it says? I run into people all the time. Well, no, I never read that book. I don't know. Um, why not? Someday you'll give account to God, and you need to know what God said. And that's what the Bible says. Well, and saves. Hebrews 7.25, we've read that. He's able to save to the uttermost. Jesus. James 1.21, we read that. It's the Word of God that saves us. The grafted word, which is able to save your soul. So do you see how that's interchangeable? It's the same. How could someone say, and I'll just say it again, how could someone say, you're not saved by the Bible, you're saved by Jesus? Jesus is his word because he is the word that spoke the word. 
And you can't get saved unless you believe his word. So you must hear it, understand it, and believe it. Now, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but do you all get that? Do you understand what I'm saying? How come there are people out there that claim to be Bible believers that don't get that? How could they make a ridiculous statement? I don't understand. But they do. They do. A man is only as good as his word. If you are trusting a man's word, then you are trusting that man. I trust in the Word of God, the King James Bible. I believe the King James Bible is the Word of God. One of these days, I don't know when I'll do it, but I want to come up here and I want to bring like 20 different Bibles that are other versions. I want to hand them out to you. And I would like us to go through maybe 12 different verses. And I would like to read it from the King James and then have you read it from those versions. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a sneaky thing. I'm going to have you read the verses that aren't in those versions. Because you know new versions take out whole verses? They do. I've got a whole list of pages of verses taken out of new versions. That's why I call them perversions. Do you want to say something? That's all I have. What do you have? have King James? No. Okay, we'll get you a King James Bible. Thank you. Okay. Make sure, Brother Mike, we get her. We have some boxes, right? We want you to have the King James Bible because it comes from the right text and they don't take anything out. Did you know the NIV has 60,000 words less than the King James? King James Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. NIV doesn't say that. You know what the NIV says? Man shall not live by bread alone. Where's every word of God? They took out every word of God that we're supposed to live. That's why we don't use other versions of the Bible. We believe in the King James. Now, here's the other thing that saves us. Did you know what else saves us? We are saved by Jesus. We're saved by the word because he is the word. All right. We are saved by the blood. Without the blood, there's no salvation. Right. Hebrews 9, 22, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. So you've got to have blood to be saved. Yeah. Well, years ago, there was a man that said, and I told you here in the morning uh, when we started, there was a guy that said, you're not saved by a thing, you're saved by a person. Mm. And that sounded real good, but the blood is a thing. Yeah. It's the thing that he had to give to save us. So, yeah, you are saved by something. <laughs> but you know what's amazing to me? What is the blood? Well, let's start in Romans 5, 9. I'm going to go through this. I'm going to show you that the blood is life. Yeah. So when you're trusting the blood, you are trusting in Jesus. Because that's his life's blood. Yeah. Right? Romans chapter 5. And look what it says in Romans 5, 9. We're actually going to go back to this and read the context again toward the end. But Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Romans 5, 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved. How are we saved? Through the blood. From wrath. What's wrath? Hell. Through him. Yep. So you're saved by the blood, the Bible says. The Bible says we're saved by Jesus. I showed you the verses. The Bible says we're saved by the word of God, the scriptures. I showed you the verses. The Bible says we're saved by the blood. Yep. So that's what we're saved by. Now, again, I told you, it's all going to intertwine. That's why I'm getting so excited. Man, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. It's all intertwined. Go to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14. And uh, if you have another version, you're going to see something missing here. <laughs> and it kind of makes me a little sad that they would take this out. Um, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness, the forgiveness of sins. New versions take out through his blood. Yep. Why would you take out the blood out of the Bible? That was Colossians what? Colossians 1.14. Why would you take the blood out of the Bible? Mm -hmm. Isn't that sad? Uh, I want the blood because the blood's what saves us. So why would you take a, a version that takes it out? Now, when we went to Bible school, we were yes. taught. It does, doesn't it? Yep. When we were in Bible school, we were taught uh, Hebrew and Greek and all that stuff. And we had the true text, the Textus Receptus, where the New Testament comes from. And then we had what's called the critical text that new versions come from, which comes from the Gnostic uh, Alexandrian Catholic text. And on the bottom of that Nestle Allen text was what's called the critical apparatus. You know, most Bible schools don't teach you critical apparatus. And down there, they tell you why they did that in that text. And they're always following Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. And those are the two texts that are used today for new versions of the Bible. And they come from Alexandria, Egypt, and they are the Gnostic text because the Gnostics said, well, well, well I don't believe that. So they cut it out. Right. Well, I don't believe that. That shouldn't be. That. And so when you have a new version of the Bible, you basically have a Bible that some scholar years ago said, I don't, I don't think I can believe all that. So I'm going to start erasing stuff. Yeah. Well, and so you're getting 
part of the Word of God, you're not getting the whole thing. Right. And that's why it's a little s scary. <laughs> Unless you're King James, you don't have the entire Word of God. Right. Which, by the way, Brother Mike brought this up, and I wanted to bring this up too. He did this on Thursday, and I guess on Sunday too. 1 Samuel 15, 1. Watch this. Hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Yep. <laughs> it's when you're reading the King James Bible, it's almost like you're hearing Jesus speak to you directly. His voice. Isn't that amazing? It's, there's a voice to it. Yep. If you have a new version of the Bible, well, there's censorship there. <laughs> they're banning every word of God because they're taking words out of his mouth. Yep. That's why I'm very careful to only use the King James Bible, not just because it's my preference. We've studied this long and hard, and we're like, hey, we want every word of God, Amen. not something that takes it out. So where were we? We're, we're back to the blood, okay? So we're saved by the blood in whom we have redemption. Redemption means to buy back, to purchase. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28 says we're purchased by the blood of God. So it's God's blood that saves us. Now let's go back to uh, Leviticus chapter 17. Why is blood so important? What is blood? Leviticus 17, 11. Now, I've had, like I told you, people try to throw this in my face because there was a famous preacher who said, we're, we're not saved by a thing, we're saved by a person. And, and they tell me I'm a heretic. Well, I'm a little hairy, but okay. But a heretic. They say I'm a heretic because I preach too much on the blood of Jesus. And, and you don't have to believe in the blood, they say. And they say the blood is the thing but it's the person, Jesus, that saves you. Are they reading their Bibles? No. Leviticus 17, 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes the atonement for your souls. So blood is life. If you're trusting in the blood of Jesus, you're trusting in who? Whose life is it? Jesus. Then you're trusting in Jesus, aren't you? What if you try to trust in Jesus, but you don't trust the Bible and you don't trust the blood? Are you trying to come to him a different way? Jesus said in his word is what he said. This is how you come to me. And you go, no, I don't want to hear what you have to say. I'm going to come to you anyway, Jesus. And just come your own way. It don't work that way. He said, I am the door. Yep. If you come any other way, you're getting cast out. Yeah. Right? right? Why would you leave out his word? Why would you want to do it your way instead of his way? You know, old Frankie Sinatra, you remember his song? I did it my way. And then he went straight to hell. Didn't he? Because he didn't come God's way. So if you want to be saved, you come to Jesus. Yes, Jesus saves by his word, by his blood. Because that's what he said in the word was the way you have to be saved. Without shedding of blood, there's no remission. You've got to trust the blood. So when people say we're saved by a person, not by a thing, no, we're saved by the blood. That's a thing. But that's the lifeblood of Jesus. So that's the person's. How can we be saved if he didn't give his life for us? And he had to give his blood. So you're really trusting in the person when you're trusting in the blood. I don't see why people try to nitpick and, and, and separate and, and, and try to. But I guess it's because they're lost. It's the only thing I can figure. Uh, lost people love to, to try to nitpick and try to undo what it is that saves us. But this is what we're saved by. Say by the blood. Uh, Romans 1, uh, excuse me, Revelation 1, 5. When you're saved, you're washed in the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ literally washes your sins away. Now that's in the spirit world. We can't see that. You don't walk around with blood all on you, you know, like that scary movie called Carrie or something. I never watched that. Oh, I don't like scary movies. They, they bother me. But I've seen a picture of the, of the poster and it's some girl in a prom dress all covered in blood. I was like, ooh, gross, gross. Well, does that happen to us when we get saved? We're covered in blood? No. That's not the body, but the soul, yes. Yep. If we could see into the spirit world right now, I could tell who's saved and who's not. Yep. Because when you sin and you're not saved, it's a stain. It's like your soul is just black. And if I could put on my spiritual goggles and look into the spirit world, I could see somebody that's all black and say, that's a lost person. And then see somebody that's red and say, oh, that's saved because they're washed in the blood. We can't see that, though, can we? As soon as you die, you'll see the spirit world. That's interesting. So it's the blood of Jesus. And it says there, did I read Revelation 1, 5? Let me just read the end of the verse because it's a little bit long. It says in the middle there, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So it's through blood that we're saved. 
And that blood is not just a thing. That's the essence of who Jesus is, because that's his life. <laughs> Let me show you a neat verse. I told you we'd go back to Romans chapter 5. Look at this, Romans chapter 5. We're going back to see that it's the blood, and the blood is his life. So it is the person. You're not trusting the person unless you're trusting his word, and his word says trust the blood. Romans chapter 5 and verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, being much more being reconciled, we shall be saved. Watch this. By his what? Life. life. <laughs> so we're saved by his life. His life is his blood. The life of the flesh is. So that's him. <laughs> because who else died and shed his blood? So do you see how this whole thing is all intertwined? Amen. You're trusting in the blood. You're trusting in Jesus, in the person. The person who shed his blood. So yeah, that's the thing that he did to save us. But that's how you trust him. Trust the blood. And that's what the Bible says. Let me read verse 11 here. And not only so, but we also join in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. We call this the blood atonement. And it's only through blood atonement that your sins are forgiven. All throughout the Bible, it was like that. You had to have a blood sacrifice and no forgiveness without blood. No forgiveness today without blood. Are you trusting in the blood? Let's turn over to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. I get so tired of this bloodless gospel being preached everywhere today. And most of your churches, they ignore the blood of Jesus. Most of them have another Bible. I think that's why they're going downhill so much and, and um, not having power. You know, most churches, there's no power there. Uh, I call, I, I'm, I told you I'll be nice. Never mind, I'll, I'll, I'll pass on that. But uh, a lot of your pastors today are a bunch of sissies. I went to a missions conference one time in Georgia, and I was both happy and sad at the same time. Because usually the men there, the missionaries, preach, and I love to hear other men preach. This missions conference, the pastor said, we're so far gone from our ancestors. He said, this missions conference, we're just going to play tapes of preachers from 100 years ago. And we just sat there in the pew and listened to preachers preach. I got goosebumps. Those men were full of the Holy Spirit and they were preaching hard. It was a different generation, almost a different world than today. Most of your people in the pulpits preach. You don't get goosebumps. A lot of times you fall asleep. <laughs> They're not preaching the word of God. There's something wrong there. What is it? Where's the Holy Spirit? Well, are they even saved? So we're saved by the blood. The blood is his life. Look at what it says that Jesus Christ is. 1 John 5, 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. This is eternal life. Jesus gave his life. We're saved by his life. I just showed you the verse. So we get eternal life through his life. What is life? The blood. <laughs> and it's the blood of Jesus who is eternal life. So he is life. So do you see how it all intertwines? You can't leave the blood out. You can't leave out the Bible. You can't leave out Jesus. It all connects. That's amazing. So we're saved by the last one here. We're saved by faith. You see, salvation is something that you must receive. Just like we read there, receive the atonement. So Jesus paid it all. And now he says, now, come and receive it. And a lot of people in the world go, I don't want that. I'm not going to come the way he said. I don't need blood. No, God, look at me and accept me the way I am. God in heaven goes, Ugh, puke. I don't want you the way you are. I want to wash you because you're dirty. You're filthy. You're slimy. You're nasty. <laughs> you're so full of just wickedness and sin. I need to cleanse you before I even let you in. I mean, somebody comes to your house and they look like Pigpen. Remember Pigpen from Charlie Brown? <laughs> and they stink. I'm to high heaven and they're just so dirty. There's a cloud of dirt around them and they knock on your door. I'd like to come in and visit with you. Do you go, well, okay, come on in. Or do you go, shoo, there's the water hose, man. When you're cleaned up, come on in. You don't want filth to enter into your home. God's in heaven. He doesn't want dirty people in heaven. I know. It's hard to spray you down with a water hose and take a scrub. Yeah. So you've got to be cleansed. And the only way you can be clean is through the blood of Jesus. Now, how do you receive the blood of Jesus? By faith. 
Ephesians 2, 8, 9, I'll just quote it to you. You should know it. This is probably the first one you need to memorize. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith. Yep. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Not of works. Not of works. It's not what we do. We don't pat ourselves on the back and say, look how good I am, God. I'm doing good, so accept me. God goes, I can't. He wants you to do good, but he can't accept you unless you're clean. And you cannot clean yourself. You can't go take a bath in blood and cleanse yourself. That doesn't work. He's the one that cleanses you. You've got to be saved by faith. And you know what Jesus said? He said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hebrews 11, 6, I believe it is. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, a lot of people in this world, they're a bunch of braggers. They're a bunch of boasters. And they walk around, look at me, I do good works, and I give to the poor, and I'm a good person, and look at all, the, and it's all about them. You know how you can tell the difference between a saved man and a lost man? Saved man, it's all about Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Lost man, it's all about him. Yep. So it's through faith that God chose for us to be saved. See, he did all this for us. Now he asks us to just believe it. The Bible calls that the simplicity of salvation. It's so simple. And it's so simple that there's some preachers out there who try to make it, oh, no, no, you've got to do works too. They try to add works to it. So you're your co-savior now? Jesus died on the cross to save you, but, but it wasn't good enough. I mean, think about what that is saying. Jesus, you didn't do enough. I'm going to help you, Jesus, save myself. If that's the case, then why don't you just spit in his face, why don't you? Isn't that what you're doing? You're saying, Jesus, <laughs> fooey on what you did, except me because I did this. Isn't that literally what it is? That offends God more than anything when you don't come to him through faith. Ephesians 1.13 tells us clearly, you got to hear something to be saved. What do you got to hear? You got to hear the gospel. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, Ephesians 1.13, how you guys doing? Good, Good to see you. you. Ephesians 1.13, I'll find it here in a second. <laughs> Ephesians 1.13, look what it says. In whom ye also trusted, okay, trust, faith, and belief are all the same thing. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. Oh, you mean you got to hear the word? Yeah. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. You don't get the Holy Spirit until you first hear the word of God. Yep. Then you've got to believe in something to be saved. Faith, what is that? Trust the blood. Then the Holy Spirit enters into you. Yep. Why? Because you're clean now, because you've been washed in the blood. You think the Holy Spirit likes to enter into dirty people? <laughs> I don't think so. So you've got to be saved first. Now let's look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and try to tie all this together. 2 Timothy chapter 3. So I wanted to share this with you because it's a blessing to me, and I also wanted to try to point out there's some crazies out there <laughs> that are straining at gnats and, and trying to, to cause division, trying to just pick one of these. They don't ex explain the whole thing. 2 Timothy 3.15. So important. I started by telling you, somebody out there said this statement. You're saved by Jesus. You're not saved by the Bible. What a silly statement. Because look at 2 Timothy 3.15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. <laughs> so you mean you, you have the, 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 the salvation is through the scriptures? You've got to have the Bible to get saved? Yeah. yeah. And then it says, through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. Yeah. So it's through faith. So it's these things that save us. But they're all pointing to Jesus because Jesus is the Word. And the life of the flesh is the blood. He gave His life when He gave His blood. So it, it all intertwines. When you trust the blood, you're trusting Jesus. When you're trusting the Bible, you're trusting in the Word that He gave. Amen. Again, a man's only as good as his Word. That's right. So we're saved by faith. Faith in what? Romans 3.25. I can't preach on this verse enough because so few preach on it today. Romans 3.25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. To declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. Oh, you mean you've got to believe to be saved? Yeah. Some people say, no, 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 you've got to keep the law. And they say salvation's by worth, 
by works. Look at verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Is it works that saves us? No. Nay, but by the law of faith. <laughs> the law we're under today is you're saved by faith. Yep. Not the Ten Commandments save us and works. Verse 28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Yep. It's not the law that saves us, thank God. So the blood of Jesus Christ, that's what saves us. And that blood is administered to us and we receive it through faith. So what are we saved by? Saved by Jesus. Saved by the Bible. Saved by the blood. Saved by faith. Amen. Now, I could go into a lot more. I, I'm going to close a little early today, but I, I didn't know if I would add this on or not. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. I'll just mention this and give you some homework. How's that? <laughs> if you get a chance, go to YouTube and look up my video, The Faith of Christ versus The Faith in Christ. Because that is an interesting study. A lot of people don't even know the difference between faith in Christ and the faith of Christ. But there are seven times in the Bible where it uses the term faith of Christ. Of. That means Jesus' faith, right? That would be faith that Jesus has. And then there's a bunch of other passages that talk about faith in Christ. That's how we get saved. And you know what new versions do? They change faith of Christ to faith in Christ a lot of times. But Christ had faith, and our faith should be in the same thing that his faith was in. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. So if you get a chance, look that up on YouTube, faith of Christ versus faith in Christ. And watch that video, and I'll show you the different places Amen. where it says that. But here's just a sampling, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. I thought you said we're saved by faith in Christ. Yeah. We're saved by, but this says faith of Christ. That's different. You ever notice that in your Bible? What is Christ's faith in? <laughs> and what should our faith be in? Does that make sense? So it says the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. Well, there's our faith in him. But he has faith too. Isn't that wild? Do you ever think of that? What do you think Jesus' faith was in? Well, yeah, Jesus believed in God, but... God told Jesus, come down to this world and do something. Shed his blood for the world. And when you do that, then through that, they can be saved. Jesus died on the cross. What did he say? It is finished. Amen. You think in his mind he had faith? It's done. Now they can be saved. He was trusting in his shedding of his blood, knowing that now if they will come through my way, the Bible, then I will save them. So Jesus' faith was in what he did to be what could save us. Now it's up to us to exercise faith to be saved. That's amazing. You ever thought of that? Faith of Christ, faith in Christ. So let's finish up here. Galatians 2.16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. Huh. And not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So Jesus had faith, and he did what he knew had to be done for us to be able to get saved. Amen. And now he says, now it's your turn to exercise faith. Now you trust in this to be saved. So I said all that kind of to uh, harp on that a little bit, those two things that I'd heard of people saying. I just want to clarify. My dad used to say there's simply no substitute for clear and effective communication. Amen. Amen. And when I hear people say something and it's not right, it makes me want to correct that. Amen. So the first statement was this. The guy says, we're not saved by the Bible, we're saved by Jesus. Well, we know that's a fallacy, don't we? Because yeah. the Bible tells us how to be saved, by faith in the blood of Jesus. And the other statement that was fallacy was somebody said, we're saved by a person, not by a thing. <laughs> well, the Bible says we're saved by the blood. And what is that? That's the actual life of Jesus. Sure. The life is who is, the, that's the person of Jesus, if you will. So we are saved through the thing that Jesus did, through the blood that he shed, because that is him. He is, that is his life's blood. That is Jesus. And yet I've heard people using those against what we preach and say, oh, no, you don't have to believe in the blood. No, you don't need the Bible to get saved. Do you see how they're saying their little man-made terms? And if they simply study the Bible, they could have a great Bible study like we did today. <laughs> and we could see what we are saved by. Thank God we're saved by Jesus. Amen. Thank God the Bible tells us how to get saved by Jesus. Amen? Amen. If we didn't have the New Testament, would we know any of this? 
Nope. We'd all be out there sacrificing goats and bulls and, and things like that, thinking that that saves us. We'd be trusting in our works, wouldn't we? We'd have, we'd have a blood, but we'd have the wrong blood. Yeah, thank God for the New Testament, for the Word of God. And thank God that it's by faith today and not works. Amen. Because under that Old Testament, whew, there were a lot of works involved. Thank God we don't have to do all that, especially in a 100 degree weather like this. Mm -hmm. Taking a little lamb, sweating like a pig, having to cut his... Have you ever cleaned an animal? That's a couple hours of work. Yeah. You'd be sweating. So I'm thankful that salvation today is the way that it is. And this is what we're saved by. I just want to clarify. I just want to make that plain, simple, to the point. And if you're one of those out there saying something different, would you get right and say it correctly? Yeah, God yeah. knows there's enough confusion in the world. Let's don't add to it if we're King James Bible believers. Amen. Yeah, amen. Let's get this thing right and preach the blood, the book, and the blessed hope. Go ahead and pan out, Laura, like we have in our flag back there. Amen. It's the blood, it's the book, King James Bible, and the blessed hope, which is the rapture. And if you're saved by faith, where are you going when Jesus comes back? At the rapture. So, all right, we'll stop there. Thank you. And, and any questions real quick? Anybody have a question? All right, stick a fork in me. I'm done. Look forward to service today. Thank you. Amen. All right.